think it's pretty common to hate our siblings sometimes. They take our stuff, bug us for no reason, try to embarrass us in front of our friends or crushes. They can be a real pain, but we always forgive them and move on because that's what family does, right? The case we're looking at today is hot off the press. It's the case of a young TikTok star who savagely took the life of her sister. On February 21st of this year, the police of Lancaster, Pennsylvania received a terrifying call from a teenage girl. The girl was Claire Miller, a 14-year-old girl who told the call operator that as the rest of her family slept, she stabbed her sister to death. The call in itself was weird, because rarely does a culprit just straight up admit to their crime on the phone. She didn't make excuses or make up a story about some intruder committing the act. Claire wanted the authorities to know it was her. It was just after one a.m. when Mannheim Township Police arrived at the Miller's home. Claire was waiting outside for them, washing the blood off of her hands in the snow. As the police approached, they saw that she had blood all over her pants too, and she just kept saying, I stabbed my sister, over and over again. She let the police into the house and took them upstairs to the bedroom of her sister, Helen. Helen was lying in her bed with a pillow over her face, red with blood. When they removed the pillow, they saw the weapon was still lodged in Helen's neck, and she was unresponsive. The police tried to perform form CPR on her at the scene, but they were already too late. Claire was arrested at the scene and taken into custody by the police. This must have been so traumatic for her parents, who were asleep when all of this took place. To find out that your daughter has passed away so horribly is one thing, but to find out your other child did it? It's unimaginable. Claire was charged with criminal homicide. This is a crime that means Claire will not be eligible for bail and automatically means she has to be tried as an adult, since homicide isn't considered a delinquent act in the state of Pennsylvania. This creates a number of very scary possibilities for Claire if she's found guilty. Because she's being tried as an adult, this means the state will be totally overlooking her age if she goes to trial. She will spend time in an adult jail or prison, could be sentenced to life behind bars, and could even be sentenced to capital punishment. That's right, Claire may be sentenced to die for what she did to her sister. Helen Miller was 19 years old and Claire's only other sibling. Helen was born with cerebral palsy, a group of afflictions that can affect how well someone is able to move, as well as cause seizures and make it difficult for someone to talk. Helen used a wheelchair her whole life and was reportedly nonverbal for the most part. She was cared for by her loving parents and seemingly had a good relationship with Claire. She even appeared in the background of some of Claire's TikToks along with their dad. However, Helen's condition does add another level of sinister to her death. Because of her cerebral palsy, Helen didn't have much control over her limbs and couldn't even sit up by herself. That means when her her sister was attacking her, there was pretty much no way she would have been able to defend herself. So with that in mind, is it still fair for Claire to be charged as an adult? Trying juveniles as adults is a super controversial point in the US legal system. First of all, how is it possible for a kid to be considered an adult in this situation? According to Sophia DeBasi, a legal writer, there are a few situations where some courts think it's okay. The nature of the crime is so serious that it is believed that the juvenile should be treated like an adult. The juvenile understood the serious nature of the crime and the consequences of their actions. They have a history of committing similar serious crimes. The juvenile has been tried by a court as an adult before. This is sometimes called the once an adult, always an adult rule. As you can imagine, a lot of people think this is wrong and kids should only be tried in juvenile court. The Equal Justice System is an organization that's working to fix the legal system in a lot of ways, including stopping juveniles being tried as adults. So this this makes us wonder, why would a seemingly normal teen want to do something so awful? An unnamed witness told police that before this happened, Claire allegedly told them that she was thinking of either taking her own life or somebody else's. No other reason has been given at the time of making this video, but I do have a couple of theories. I'm going to take you guys back a few years. Anybody here remember Slender Man? In 2014, two 12-year-old girls were charged stabbing their friend 19 times, claiming they were told to do it by Slender Man. They were set to be tried as adults. One of the girls was not found guilty due to insanity, and she was later diagnosed with schizophrenia. She'll probably spend most of her life in a secure psychiatric facility. The other girl was given 40 years to life behind bars, but was also ordered to spend time in a psychiatric facility. I mention this case because, like with Claire, before they committed their crime, they seemed totally normal. Is it possible Claire felt compelled to do what she did 
suicide due to an undiagnosed mental illness? Obviously, that's pure speculation. I can't say whether or not Claire is mentally ill, but no doubt if she is, it will come out in her trial. Another possible reason why she did this to Helen is pretty simple. Jealousy. Because Helen was being cared for by her parents, a lot of their attention was focused on her, and it's possible that Claire felt neglected by her family. According to a 2011 study, this isn't uncommon. Many kids who have siblings with disabilities feel as though they're pushed to one side and never get the full picture of what's going on. Experts have called this the waiting room because they're always waiting for answers. If this is the case, it's unfortunate that Claire didn't always feel included in her family, but that isn't an excuse for what she's done. It wasn't Helen's fault she had cerebral palsy, and it wasn't their parents' fault that Helen needed extra help with her daily activities. According to reports, Helen loved art, and she was a talented painter and sculptor. Although her Facebook page has now been taken down, a report stated that she once won an award for watercolor painting she created. In the craziness of this case, it's important to remember that she was still a person, a talented person, that loved and trusted her sister. When the news first broke of this case, everybody was talking about it. I know that because a bunch of you guys have been asking me to cover it in a video. Similar to previous cases I've looked at, this one blew up because of Claire's involvement with TikTok. It's unknown how big of a following she had before her her arrest, but at the time her account was taken down by TikTok, she had 20k followers on there and over a million views. What's kind of weird is that pretty much as soon as she was arrested, people started seeing her videos on their For You page, almost like the algorithm was deliberately pushing them to get views. This could be a total coincidence. It could be that when local kids from her school and stuff heard what was going on, they started spamming her account with views and comments. By the time her account was removed, every comment was about Helen's death and people looking for signs that this was coming in her videos. Some of her videos have been re-uploaded on other platforms and they're kind of weird to watch. She seemed totally normal. She liked anime, making funny videos of her dad, and lip singing to music, like a lot of teens on TikTok. Her account was deleted due to multiple community guideline violations, according to TikTok, but that was more than enough time for people to download her videos. Personally, I don't think they'll stop showing up online anytime soon and will probably just get even more popular as the case progresses. Speaking of which, what happens to Claire now? Well, she was scheduled to have a preliminary hearing on March 30th, but it's been pushed back until April 16th for unknown reasons. It could have something to do with the ongoing pandemic, which has caused delays in a lot of cases over the past year. Hopefully, come April 16th, the trial will be officially underway and we will finally learn what happened to Helen and why her life was taken in such an awful way. Looking for evidence and, and trying to come up with a timetable and whatever to help them, whatever they can find to help them understand what might have happened. That brings us to the end of today's video. What do you guys think of this case? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. As this case is ongoing, make sure to keep Helen's parents in your thoughts during what I'm sure is an awful time for them.